Okay, if you have just equal sign, you get just at the boundary. But in the test, let's say you put right side equation into your calculator, which you need to, not just you should. And you put the left hand side equation in your calculator. And you get left hand side is more than right hand side. Now you have to tell me if it is transition, what, what kind of like flow pattern it is. You cannot tell. You cannot tell because that equation is equal sign. So maybe you put a note on that that okay, less than or equal will make that equation to be D max less than D C D. And that's where the case where we have this bubble flow. So where is it? Where is it? This transition is transition to F, which is that. Yes, question. Yes. So we have a mixed velocity in the denominator. Vm? Yeah. So if we want to be dispersed, it's because liquid superficial velocity of the liquid is high. So we need to put a Less than. Mm. Okay, okay. You have the ever word here, and you also have the ever word there. Uh, Is that both? Okay. This equation will give me this line. Right? But I know that if I increase VSG a little bit, it will make D max to be more than D. DCD and it won't be sphere anymore, so it will be slab flow. So when VSG go up a little bit, you see this? This curve is on the log scale. On the linear scale, it's like that. So if you increase VSG a little bit, you move from this bubble flow to slab flow. Or you may take a note and say, hey, this equation is correct. No need to put that sign, but just know that if VSG is more than that, then you have slump. Okay? Too much gas, it cannot stay in the dispersed bubble for, form as a spherical shape. It deforms. Too much gas is not good. It cannot stay as this bubble flow. That's transition F. Alright. You remember transition D? Let's, let's open your book. Which page is about transition D? Let's transition D. First of all, what is transition D? You have the ABCD, EF, right? What page number? 73. 73 is about transition D. It's independent to this bubble of flow. It's about transition D. Is it the same? Is it the same? On that case, it's horizontal flow, and we talk about the change from this bubble flow to slab, or slab to this bubble flow. This time, we talk about the same thing. Why should we have different expression? You got my point? We're talking about the same thing. Why do we have to do it again? Why don't we just use the same thing? So previously, we compared what force? Turbulence and buoyancy. Okay. And the expression is something has to do with T squared. Or if liquid velocity, equation 3.62, we are greater than something. Right? We have this bubble flow, is it? V turbulent more than V uh, T uh, buoyancy force. Turbulent force more than buoyancy force. This thing is not about turbulent force and buoyancy force. This thing is about like, oh, it has have something about turbulent force, but it is in the form of D max. So this expression and that expression, are they the same?
So this bus to bubble flow. So it's not quite directly from slack, right? Yeah. It's like just that, right? So it's jump from this bubble to bubble. And when we jump from slack to this bubble, we have to do with um, buoyancy thing. All right, you, you will see eventually on what should we do on the unified model. The way that this book presents you is, okay, first of all, how do we characterize the flow pattern? Then how to calculate pressure for each flow pattern? And the last thing is how to combine everything together like when you see in Chow and all. The actual way of doing it is Chow and all. Okay, this time we'll be answering. We'll talk about that, okay? Now you take a note of the difference between F and D. All right, they are, they are not the same. Okay, they are not the same. But okay, look. Look at this one. What if my, this bu my bubble flow doesn't exist? If I don't have my bubble flow? This case is a uh, small pipe, right? Small pipe may not have B or bubble flow. Do I have transient F? Oh, I don't have transient F. Say, so, hey, transient F is about transient to, from this bubble flow to, to what? Bubble flow, right? What about this case? Can we use it? Or we cannot do anything? Because the transition to bubble flow? Yes, we can and we still do and you need to do it. It is that line. That line is transition F. Okay? So is the comparison between D max and D critical? I want to know if maximum possible size in the display bubble flow is that going to be spherical shape? If it is spherical shape, this means less than the critical, this means we have this bubble flow. Okay. So next one is this bubble flow to other flow pattern. Transition G. This one is this bubble flow to uh, what, what, what do they call it? This bubble flow to bubble flow, is it? Transition F. This bubble and bubble. Is it this bubble and bubble? What do you have in the book? Transition F. Transition to this bubble flow, F and G. Oh, they talk both at the same time. F and G, not just F or G. Okay, F and G. Now let's take a look at transition G. Transition G is about alpha. For cubic lattice packing the gas bubble, alpha is 0.52. That is as tight as it can. It cannot be more than that. Right? So cubic lattice is like bubble sit next to each other, very tight pack. See what I'm saying? It, if we Pack it tighter than that, it cannot remain as a spherical shape. This bubble flow cannot exist for alpha more than 0.52, or alpha max is 0.52. Too much gas. We cannot have this bubble flow. Okay, that is transient G. That's it. Easy enough. This criterion is independent from turbulence and surface tension force. The void fraction in the disk bubble flow is a no slip void fraction. Alpha greater than alpha max. The bubble forms a slug flow occur. The transient F ends where transient G occur. Okay. So when you draw transition G, whenever you meet with transition, or oh, when you draw transition F, whenever you meet with G, it ends, and we use transient G. The criterion for this bubble flow, VST over VST plus VST are greater than 552. If it's greater than, then we don't have this bubble flow. Okay? So that, that line is written like that. Alpha equal to 552. Okay, is that line. Mm. 
Do we have that line in horizontal flow? Let, let's, let's look at your book. Do you have that line in, in do you ever have that line in horizontal flow? No, right? Do you have H L over D U to pi something transient B pi thirty five, right? Previously, you have kind of pull up or H L over D equal to pi thirty five. Okay, for transient B less than pi thirty five, yes, you have another flow or something. Now is similar concept, but it's about packing. We cannot pack exceed the packing uh, capacity. Above 52, we cannot have this bubble flow anymore. Good, that's transient G. Use both. Transient edge, uh, if I skip everything at the end, it will be just the equation, just that. Okay, that equation. It's on what page? What page have that equation? Come on, what page? One. Forty-five. Okay. So <clears throat> that equation is transition equation. Transition edge. Alright. In the book is 40.6, I get 42.6 minus my greater cost. Otherwise, I don't put it on the slide. But I use both, it looks similar. Right? That is transition edge. L over D equal to something as a function of VM. Okay. And that's for transition slot to shirt. We will go into detail, okay? But first of all, let's identify the equation. What is the equation for that transition? When you look at that, can you draw it? Like in take-home exam? Even though you don't know how we get that, can you draw it? Yes, of course. Vm, okay, we have uh, So it's a relationship. And Le over D is constant. Le is in trans length, right? that's just the length. Pipe length. Below this, we have churn. Above this, we have slug. Transient edge look like uh, that. That is transient edge. So you put VS out. In and you try to get VSG. So we, we can only do that for one length? Just one length, yes. The, it it tells the length, okay, let me explain about, without any derivation, okay, let me explain about that equation by itself. This equation tells us greater than this, we have slack. If the length is greater than LE, we have slug. If the length shorter than LE, we have shun. Okay? Pipe length. Pipe length. Length from the inlet. So, what I can say is this. Shun flow is a special case of the slug flow is the entrance effect of the slug. When you have a pipe, any pipe, Early on, if you have vertical flow, early on, on the very bottom, you always have shirt. Okay? And if you, if the length of L over D is more than this value, whenever length is more than that value, we don't have shirt anymore. Shirt flow disappear. So this means, inside the well, when it's horizontal well, it's going up, like the one that we have in the lab, in the corner, you always have shirt. Like we have small bubble merge to each other, sometimes it shake a little bit, unless you flow very slow. And far away from the corner, 
it will become slug flow. Churn flow is a special case of slug flow. Good? That's the equation. Next one is transient chain. Of course, derivation is important. We will go through that. But let's take a look at the final product. That's it. 3.1, you see that? 4.39, which page? 4.39. 147. VST equal to 3.1 multiplied by something. That is transient G. J, I'm sorry, transient J. Transient to analog flow. If VST is more than that, we're going to have analog flow. Okay. By the way, this is not the end. This is not the, the end thing because it's, it's not that accurate if you look at it. Okay, transient J, you look at it, hey, transient J, um, look at this. Transient J, it's just a straight line. How can it be? It's, it's not realistic, right? If you combine with your data, a transient J is a dashed line, but over here we have slug flow. So and transient J is not that good enough. We will use it for now, but there is a better transition to use for analog flow to happen. And analog flow or not analog flow is very important, okay? Because that is telling us: Are we going to have liquid loading in the well? Or we don't. Okay, so A it is important. That's transient J. Transient edge is that line. Transient edge is that line, and that is transient J. Okay, there are some derivations. We will go through that. I promise. And that's final product. Now you know how to use transient J and transient edge, even though we skip the derivation. After that, um, let's move forward a little bit. After that, it's about how do we get pressure drop. Okay. This is bubble flow modeling. When we have bubble flow, this is how we get alpha, this is blah, 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 and this tells us how we get pressure drop. Okay. Then we talk about how do we get pressure drop. Sylvester model for vertical slug flow. Okay. There are several steps to follow, but okay, that's how we get ready up. Once you know, it's just a step-by-step -step calculator. It's long. It's, it is long. And then we have another flow model. After you know that it's another flow model, then okay, here's a step to follow and calculate how, to, how do we calculate the friction and everything, and at the end we get the uh, pressure drop for the case of analog flow. Alves model, okay, analog flow. And then we will have ancillary et al. Comprehensive well bond model used for anything in the well. Okay. Look at this picture. In the well, even though you may start with single phase liquid, eventually pressure drop, gas coming out, we may have bubble flow and we will form small cap, bubble cap, and have a slug flow, and eventually we may have some churn flow over here, maybe, and then or this part may be churn flow, and we may have analog flow. Okay. Churn flow is, is imagined to be like at the beginning of the pipe. It's also the transition between slug and angular flow. Between slug and angular, it has a little region called shell flow. Yes? So, it happens after slug. When VST increase, when we increase VST gas velocity, and when we are about to turn into, that we may have this, depending on the length, depending on the length, still depending on the length, but we may, if the length is short enough. Question? So, Of course, and iterate it. So the way that it should be done, 
Okay. The way it should be done is we start at the bottom, we know pressure and temperature at that point. We run flash calculation to find out how much is the gas fraction, how much is the liquid fraction. So PVT will tell us what is the liquid uh, viscosity, like all the fluid property. Once we know the fluid property, we determine the flow pattern. After we determine the flow pattern, we calculate the pressure at the next point. Right? When you do the pressure at the next point, we calculate fluid property at that point again. Oh, actually you should do this. When we know fluid property at the next point, we know pressure and temperature at the next point, we go back and try to get average pressure and temperature in here. Average. And then you use average property to calculate fluid property and then calculate flow pattern. Once you know flow pattern, you calculate pressure drop. Once you know pressure drop, you get pressure at the next point, then do the average and iterate until it converts, then move on to the next point. Okay? Notice that this kind of iteration is similar to like Euler approach. Euler approach means it's slow and not that accurate. Uh, it's difficult, but we can actually do better. Okay? The difficulty is, if we want to do like RK4, we need to know um, the slope. What is the slope? dp dz. We need to know that. Or we need to know d of phi over dz. Phi is like mass flow rate ratio for the gas. Because when we move on, gas more gas coming out. We don't flow with constant gas mass flow rate, but gas mass flow rate keep become more and more and more because of pressure drop. Kind of, yeah. So it's a little bit more difficult in this class. I tell you that that's a real case, but we don't do any of that, okay? So at the end, we talk about answering model. Answering model, use title, bunny, bunny, blah, 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 combine everything. And look at this, this is bunny prediction for any angle which is not in this set of lecture yet. I think about it, let's, let's, let's do quiz or something. <laughs> so then at the end we tell, okay, answering model is better than any other model. Okay? That's it. Then we talk about flow pattern at any other angle other than perfect 90 degree or perfect zero. Okay. Alright, now what you can do is you know how to plot transient J, you know how to plot transient H. Okay. But we didn't go into detail of transient H yet. Let's do it. In transition H, okay. vertical slug flow is characterized as orderly alternate flow of the bubble and liquid slug. Increasing gas flow rate causes slug to be shorter. Okay, you already know that, right? More gas, slug becomes short. Tele bubble becomes long. Eventually, the gas slug are blown through by the gas phase and transition to churn occur. It may sound like I read the slide for you. Yes, I read the slide for you. But the phenomena is this. When you have bubble flow, Shunt flow happened because the bottom bubble moved fast enough to break through or blow through the next chunk of liquid. That's where we get churn flow. And in the phase, what we will define, so we have like chaos, chaotic type. It's like shaking up now that you have seen in the lab. Transition from slot to shunt flow it's complex, not fully really understood at the time, but we have model to do it. Tetravedal suggests uh, a flow transition 
to be in trans region on the slump floor. Okay, I don't show the video, but you, I think you have seen it, the one that's slow motion. Okay, to identify the churn flow, we have to know at what point, at what length of the pipe that is enough to have fully developed slump flow. Okay. We say, hey, fully developed is LS over D is 16. LS is slump length. That length. Okay. LS over D is 16. That is stable. Okay. And <coughs> some length of pipe is needed for the jet to be decayed and the velocity profile in the slump flow becomes slump velocity. What I'm talking about, what is that jet? Look at this. You see this velocity at the top of the bubble. It has one profile, right? And that velocity is not the same as the velocity inside. The velocity inside the slug body, so this part is the slug body, right? Even in the slug, the side move down, but the middle can move up, right? So it takes some some length for the jet to decay and approach that velocity. So if you look at the center line velocity, center line velocity of the short slug is higher higher than usual to have mass balance. What does it mean? Center bubble two, which is that one. And the bubble one, which is that one. The bubble two move faster than the bubble one. Is that possible? Is it from the video you will see that because the bottom tail bubble move faster than it merge and become a bigger one. Why do we have that kind of thing? Okay, look at the velocity. Um V C two which is the center line velocity of the bubble 2 and that is Vc1 Vc1 is the velocity at that point is 1 by 2 Vm okay. but the velocity at that point is kind of greater than Vm okay. because of this it broke through the, uh, the slug body and chain flow happened let's take a look at the actual velocity inside what is the definition of that velocity? Okay, when we zoom in, slug roll through, we have some slug, uh, some film fall back, merge with the following one. So when it merge, when this thing break, it roll through, the bubble size become double, or I mean, not bubble size, but the slug body become double, okay, due to the merge. Um, <clears> the <throat> bubble also coalesce and then it doubles its length. So when we look at this, as z equals 0, that's z equals 0. So this coordinate we move down, down is positive. Okay. z equals 0 is at the end of the bubble 1. z equals 0, we see our center line velocity equal to VTB. Do you agree? The reason for that is the velocity at that point is the same as the interface velocity and the interface velocity is VTB. Okay. Liquid exactly at the front of the slug. Oh, this is this thing we call slug, not a bubble. Liquid exactly at the front of the slug move at the tail bubble velocity. So VC is VTB. At LS, or uh, at this point, VC equal to 1.2 LM. Liquid at the end of the slug body moves slower than VTB. Is it? Okay, let's look at it a little bit. Liquid in the slug body moves slower than the interface, right? Okay. Typically, liquid in the slug body for horizontal flow 
we say it moves at the speed of Vm. In this case, vertical flow, Tyler and his team say, okay, Vc at the very end is 1.2 Vm. Less. Okay. It's less. Why is not Vm? Because it's standard line. At the middle point, the velocity is higher than the average velocity. But if we talk about average velocity, if we don't talk about center line velocity, okay, it's Vm. But when we have when we talk about the point velocity, velocity at the point, at the center, is 1.2 Vm because it's turbulent flow, right? So at that point, actually at everywhere in that, or maybe at that point, it's 1.2 Vm. Center line velocity. Center line velocity over there is VTB. Alright. Which one is more? VTB or 1.2 VM? Okay. Let's take a look on how they derive it. Um, <coughs> Mm, I think I should go further now because what you think maybe not quite what title thing or what you think. We have exponential decay is assumed for velocity profile in the slug body. So there is a velocity decay, change of velocity. Okay, change of velocity. And they say, okay, it's exponentially decay. Uh, I have to, okay, what was the question I said? No, I was looking at the equation before. That equation where Vc is equal to 1.2 Vm, that is the same thing as Vtb equals to C, the C subtract over Vm, right? Without drift. We are talking about different things. Previously in our zone flow, when we, we, when we say VTB equal to 1.2 multiplied by Vm plus V drift, that we talk about average velocity. But here specifically we talk about center at velocity at the center point. Not the average. So it's not the same. Okay, got it? I think we don't have much time. No uh, course book, okay, no computer. Let's do quiz. And we will finish this. Uh, next week is uh, take home exam week. Next week, no class on 23rd, 25th. Okay, take home exam week. And take home exam we will post on Blackboard. Can start doing it now. It's the same as last time. Oh, put, 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 put back. No book, no book. No, no, no. Oh, I give you F. No cell phone either. You should be able to do this, okay? It's exactly the same. We will stop at 11, 20, 30.